it's safe to say we've hit the persimmon mother load. All right guys, welcome back to another video here. Today we are doing something that is really cool and that is picking some persimmons. We're currently driving right now. I know where a couple persimmon trees are at. We're gonna drive to the different locations, go out, pick some up off the ground, maybe pick some off the tree, and then we're hopefully gonna be able to make persimmon pudding later. So stay tuned, this is gonna be awesome. We're to the spot, we're at our first persimmon tree and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna show you guys what a persimmon tree actually looks like, how to identify the bark and kind of what the leaves look like. So there we go. So a good way to identify if it's a persimmon tree or not, it has this bark that kind of looks like all wavy and kind of like little bitty pieces and it's all broken apart. And the leaves are these oval shapes. And the way that you're going to check and see if these are actually ready to be picking up is not actually looking at the tree. It's by looking at the ground. So persimmons, whenever they're first growing on the tree, they're going to look like this. Totally unripe. They're really hard. You can't really squish them. And then whenever they're ripe, they turn orange, they fall off the tree, they get real gooey. This one's a little overripe and it's been sitting on the ground too long, so we're not going to be able to do anything with it. But it comes out and there's a little bit of a pit in it, or a seed, or a couple of them. Some of these are just too ripe to pick up. But we might be able to scavenge around here and maybe find one or two that are on the ground. Or hopefully more than one or two, or we're not going to be able to make anything. And we're going to be able to make a persimmon pudding out of it. So let's get to doing a little bit of looking here. Yeah, the majority of the ones on this tree, unfortunately, are just not ripe. Maybe it's due to the fact that this tree is not getting as much sunlight as some other trees that we've went to and got some already. But in these weeds here, which is where the majority of them I think have fallen, you just can't really see any. But there's another one right over here, so let's check that out. Being that it's only about 25 feet from the other one, I don't know if we're really going to find any that are ripe. I am not really seeing too many. I'm just seeing a lot of them still being nice and green like this. So... We're gonna go to another spot. We were just about to leave, but I'm glad we ended up finding one here. As you can see, through the foliage, through the foliage, or foliage, or whatever the word is, bam, that is exactly, <laughs> oh, look at that thing. That's a good looking persimmon. That's exactly what we're looking for. Not being completely rotten or so like this one was. Well, you're gonna get some that don't quite look as good like this one. This is a primo persimmon. This is exactly what you want to find. This is super awesome. I wish you could smell them. If you don't know what a persimmon smells like, it, what do you think it smells like? It smells like uh, some sort of sweet little uh, treat. I don't know, but it's awesome. So we got one persimmon. How many do we need to make a pie? Or not a pie. How many do we need to make a pudding? Mm -hmm. We're going to keep looking, but uh, actually I'm going to keep looking in these weeds. It's really impossible to find any of them. And eh, we probably got another hour and a half of daylight or so. So we're gonna go to another spot, jump back in the truck to a spot where there's a lot of persimmons that have fallen on this tree that we know of because we've already gotten some picked. So we're gonna go there and check it out. Hopefully we can find some. All right, there is a lot of persimmons here. Oh yeah, this is the first thing I saw. Check this out. Mm. Good little persimmon, good little persimmon. Oh, some there, some there. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Just walk all over the place and make sure you're not stepping on any. Yes, those look great. Man, I haven't seen something that orange and beautiful since our last commander in chief. <laughs> all right, now that we know that we're at a spot where there's a ton of persimmons, obviously, we're gonna get down and we're gonna start picking some of these up. And I've literally been picking for, how long has this video been going? I've been picking for like two minutes already. I've got a plethora. Look at these things. What do you got, bud? I think I'm winning. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if you could hear that, but one literally just fell off the tree. This is so pretty. It is. This is awesome. I mean, they're just absolutely... They're just literally... I don't even think we can pick them all. My brother just said he's got one in his yard. And he said it puts this one to shame, which I can't believe because this thing right now is just absolutely blowing our minds. But then again, we did just find two, so. All right, well, I'll get back to it. The tree we're hunting here is a lot better representation on what bark looks like from a persimmon tree. I just put my hand on it there to give it some scale. It was a pretty good size. There was one bigger, but it got knocked down. 
this tree is a pretty decent size. There was one that was about twice as big as this one, <clears throat> but whenever we put this fence in, there was a, I don't know, miscommunication about where roots were. And the tree ended up blowing over and we ended up cutting that thing up. Here's the top out of it. Persimmon wood is known for being, I think it's one of the hardest species of wood. Definitely in America. People back in the day used to take the wood and they would make golf club heads out of it. So, little fun fact. It's also really good for smoking. People just really like it, it's pretty cool. And then another thing that some people do that are, that some people do and some people don't, but they won't overfill their bags just because, I mean, they're gonna get squished anyway whenever you make them into pulp, but just get a bag kind of full or a bowl kind of full and then just switch to another bowl or bag just so you're not smashing them all up and they're easier to process. At this point, our bags were pretty full, but we still decided to go check out my brother's tree, which ended up being the holy grail of all persimmon trees. All right, so we got a male one over here and we got a female one. Kind of hard to see, but on the male, there is no fruit. But on the female, as you can see, there is obviously a ton of fruit. Whoops. They all look awesome. This tree is absolutely loaded as well. I mean, there you go, one just fell. And we also got our, the old cousin to the persimmon, a pear tree. As you saw from the snippet earlier, I was eating one of the persimmons just to show the seeds inside, but if you could get to one of these pears before the yellow jackets did, they ended up being really good and they're a super tasty treat. Super delicious. So shout out to all the pears. I ended up eating that thing and got to work doing some serious persimmon harvesting. And whenever I said that this tree was the holy grail of all persimmon trees, I 100% meant it. Everything from being able to crawl around on your hands and knees in the short grass instead of being in a tall bunch of weeds, and the fact that there was just so many stinking persimmons everywhere that you had to watch where you were actually walking, it was just a great experience. Let's freaking go! If we don't, I'd be very surprised. And with this one, we got ourselves a good mass of persimmons. That's my bag. That's the wife's bag. Oh, she was even pulling the tops off. Showing me up. All right, we're gonna get these back to the house. We got tons of them here. Definitely enough to make the burr. Well, we can make an entire slew of... Oh, I just walked through the biggest cobweb. Ah. Well, we got enough to make the biggest slew of persimmon pudding ever. Multiple slews of persimmon puddings. We're gonna be able to take some of this and freeze it. All right, then we're going to process these up and we'll show you how we're gonna do that next. And then another good tip and thing to do whenever you're picking these things, and I should have been doing it, but I wasn't very much. Just go ahead and take the tops and throw them off. That way, just like my wife's here, looks great. And with my bags, <laughs> there's gonna need a little bit more work to go into them, but thankfully the tops come off pretty easily. And I'm just kind of throw them. I don't need that. All right, let's get these things in the fridge, and then tomorrow night we're gonna process them. All right, we'll mess with these tomorrow. Don't really have time tonight, we gotta go do some other stuff, so we'll start messing with those in three, two, one. And we're back. Now it is time to do some processing and get them ready to put into a pudding. And since I was a total dummy and didn't get all these processed up by taking the tops off whenever I was picking, all we did today was take all the tops off of my darn two bags. It took a little while, but it made the processing in the end, which we ended up doing the following day, a lot faster. However, once we had all the tops picked off, it was truly ready to get going and really do some processing. We ended up going back the following night, picked a little bit more persimmons at the first tree that we ended up going to that had a bunch, and then we went to our house the following night, and it was really time to get down. It is officially time to start processing, and the things that we're going to be doing to do this are a little spatula doohickey thing, baggies with the dates marked just in case we get too much, which we're totally going to have, and we're going to be able to free some a little container for cottage cheese that we're going to be using as a little filler mechanism device this measuring piece that's going to be used to measure out two cups just like this right here and you push it out and of course the most important ingredient a ton of persimmons obviously we're going to bring the scale out here first we're going to try and put these in a bucket weigh them up and we're just going to see how many pounds we have here because we have quite a bit dang it <laughs> This darn scale's a piece of junk. Alright. <laughs> this is 
is insanity. 43 pounds, wow. All right, we're gonna get these unbags. I think I just crushed half of them. That is a lot though. So 43.6 pounds of persimmons. We're gonna see how much pulp we can make. We're gonna be putting them in two cup bags, which is what you need to make a persimmon pudding. Let's get to this. Now that we have the persimmons finally laid out here in this humongous pile, and we're gonna be processing them up in three different methods. The first method, this is the oldest method that we have. This super small little doohickey device and it gets persimmons nice and smashed up, leaving the seeds inside and letting the pulp drain out to the bottom. The second option that we have is this food processor, which is putting the persimmons in, turn it and spin it, and as you can see, got a bunch of small holes in it. All the persimmon pulp goes down to the bottom, seeds stay inside, and the newest addition to the persimmon processing fleet is this electric processor, which looks like you just throw them into the top. Pretty fancy. So you just put them into the top. It doesn't look very big and there's so many. So we're gonna be using two of these options. Or primarily we're gonna be using the electric processor and we're gonna be using the normal super handy processor. I think the normal processor is gonna be our best bet. The electric processor might just be a little bit too small, but we're gonna get this thing put together. We're gonna start loading up these persimmons. We're gonna start processing. Let's get it. All right, and after we really started diving into how all this stuff was getting processed up, the best option was definitely the large processor that my wife's using here. The second best processor was the cone one that I was using. And then the third best was the electric one. The electric one just couldn't keep up and we actually ended up breaking it. I don't know if we ended up just overusing it or what, but anyway, we ended up making do. We just ended up using the big one and the cone shape and we ended up getting a pretty good amount of it processed up. Well, I say a pretty good amount of it. In all honesty, it doesn't even look like we made it in after I kind of do a little recap here in a second. But in all honesty, we needed a larger processor in order to really make a dent in 50 pounds of persimmons. We'll get one in the future, but with using the equipment that we had on hand, I think we did all a great right, job. Team persimmon. We're calling it a night. It is 9.37, so after about 40 minutes of processing, we were able to get a decent amount made up. We got them in, like I said, it's two cut bags. We got one, two, three. So we got another two right there. So four, then with what I've just been going over the time lapse, I'd say that's another, so I'd say that's another two bags. So I'd say all together we got eight to 12 done. And we still have, obviously have a ton of them to do, so I'm not gonna be able to record all that. So on to the next scene, we're gonna show you what it looks like whenever all of these are processed up. So stay tuned in three, two, one. Alrighty, finished product here. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17. And then also there was, let's see, I believe probably, I'd say another three in the leftover containers. And we also have already given away about seven bags. We're gonna have a total 27 bags of pulp out of all of the work that we did. I'd say this was a success, guys. Um, as for the persimmon pudding, we haven't made any yet and I don't wanna take the time to make one for this video because I wanna post it. But if you guys do end up liking this video and it gets watched a lot or whatever and people want to know actually what a persimmon pudding is, how to make it, how it tastes, all the ins and outs of it, I'll make that up in another video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you did. God bless and as always have a good one. Thanks for watching everybody.